Heritage Action for America urging Republicans to vote no on that proposal because it did not do enough to stop Obamacare. Michael Needham's president of Heritage Action, my guest now from the Hill. Good morning to you, sir. From the Cannon Office Building in Washington, D.C., you are in the belly of the beast. Why did you, I think the memo went out at 4.30 Eastern time yesterday afternoon. I'll share part of that in a moment with our audience. Why did you not support it? Well, Bill, look, I don't think our memo was actually what tanked this bill yesterday. What tanked the bill was millions of Americans who agree with our perspective that there are two main issues being debated in the Capitol right now. One is the debt limit. We have a country with $17 trillion of debt and tens of trillions of dollars of debt that are coming on in the next couple of decades. And the other is Obamacare. The reason the government is shut down is that Obamacare is unfair, it's unaffordable, it's unworkable. Every single day, there's more evidence of all of that coming out. And House Republicans have remained strong in saying, we are not going to let this bill go forward. We're not going to allow this to be inflicted upon the American people, and we need to do something to delay it. How many members do you think listen to you? Well, I think that many members have been listening to their constituents. You know, in July, when this whole effort got started with Mike Lee and Ted Cruz and Mark Meadows in the House uh, leading it, people said, well, it didn't go anywhere. Nobody in Washington, D.C. thinks that this effort has any a chance of succeeding. And then they went home to their districts. And all through August, millions of Americans stood up and they said to their members of Congress, how can you let a bill go forward that is causing millions of people to lose their jobs or have their jobs moved from full time to part time or their premiums going up or their health insurance being dropped? How can you let that go forward? And members of Congress came back to Washington. They demanded that something be done to stop this. And I admire what the House has done for the last couple of weeks. It's unfortunate that the Senate hasn't been responsive to the American people, hasn't listened to all of the harms that are happening because of Obamacare, and, and really has undercut the House throughout the last two weeks. Do you think you have the sway in the Senate as it appears that you do in the House? Well, you know what, I think what's happened over the last couple of months is the House has become incredibly responsive to the American people. And, and that's the system of government that the founders set up. The House is supposed to be um, close to the American people. This is a big town. There's a lot of interest in here. And I think that the American people's voice is certainly not heard as loudly in the Senate as it has been in the House. And, and clearly, the White House um, isn't listening to the American people about Obamacare. And, and frankly, the White House doesn't seem to be interested in the separation of powers that exists in this country, which says that the House of Representatives has a right to a seat at the table, has a right to a voice, and has the power of the purse. Uh, but the American people have been heard loud and clear in the House. That's something that's incredibly encouraging. It's a good thing for our democracy. And hopefully their voice will be heard more loudly in the Senate and the White House. Uh, come, back, come back to the House for a moment. I heard 17 members were ready to vote no yesterday in that Republican caucus. I heard 40 members. How many members do you think were willing to? I think, that the there's, I, I, think, I think that almost every member of the House Republican Conference, if not all of them, is deeply concerned about Obamacare and knows that we have to do something before January 1 to stop it. You, the subsidies come on on January 1. That's when the big entitlement program starts. We saw at the start of this year millions of Americans having uh, their health insurance dropped or premiums going up or part-time employees, um, uh, full-time employees going to part-time. And that's going to start again on January 1. Um, and so there's millions of Americans who are being afflicted by this. And, and I have full confidence that House Republicans understand what's at stake. Um, and, I, and I admire the fight that they've been fighting over the last uh, couple I, of weeks I, and months. I saw your memo. It was strongly worded. It's about five paragraphs in length. Here is one of the paragraphs. Quote, Health insurance premiums are skyrocketing across America. Employers are shedding jobs and hours, many of which you just stated right now. It continues, the majority of American people oppose Obamacare. Even many on the left, including some powerful unions who were once the law's strongest supporters, have conceded that it is a train wreck. I know you believe that, but with a Democrat in the White House and Harry Reid with the majority in the Senate, what can you do? Well, everybody understands that we're not going to be able to repeal this law until 2017 and that we have to win the Senate and we have to win the White House. But right now, it is clear that this bill is not ready for prime time. It is clear that this bill is unfair. The president's given a waiver to employers. Why can't we give that waiver to the individual people all across America? Why can't we give a, a waiver so that religious, religious employers don't have to violate their principles and their values in, in implementing Obamacare? Why are members of Congress exempt for this, but the American people aren't? And so I think the question that the House has been asking is why can't we have a defund of this bill for a year? Why can't we delay the bill for a year and let the administration get its act together in terms of the implementation and let the American people actually consider the implications? You know, Nancy Pelosi told us we had to pass this bill in order to find out what's in it. Well, we found out what's in it, and I think now we have the opportunity and, and really the obligation to decide whether we want to go forward or whether we want to have a timeout and consider what this is the right thing for America. And Michael, you said that the majority of Republicans in the House probably agree with you. But again, it comes back to the question about what power you have to push it through. 
with a Democratic majority in the Senate and, 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 a, and a president, this is, I mean, and this is the bill. This is the piece well, of legislation in five and a half years. And, and he should explain to the American people, and he should explain to the American people why he refuses to respect the right that the Constitution gives the power of the purse to the House. James Madison wrote in Federalist 58 that the House of Representatives has the power of the purse to achieve redress of grievance. And the American people have a, a grievance against an incredibly unfair, unworkable, and unaffordable law. And the House of Representatives is doing the right thing so, in so using may, its constitutional so maybe, power maybe of the purse. Maybe go piece by piece on this. And, and uh, I mean, that, that idea floated yesterday to make sure that members of government have to live with Obamacare, members of the administration have to live with Obamacare. Uh, w why not allow that to go forward right now and, and force the other side to show their cards? Yeah, look, we should absolutely make sure that members of Congress and members of the administration are subject to the same laws that the American people are. But that does nothing to stop the American worker whose job has just been put from full-time to part-time. That does nothing to stop the American family that's seeing their insurance premiums going up by hundreds of dollars per month. There's a real problem out there that's afflicting the American people, and, and Washington, D.C. may want to sit here and play okay. political games and may want to find a punt. It's not doing anything to address the real problems. Uh, Michael, I have ten more questions, but I apologize. <laughs> I'm out of time. We'll do this again, okay? Michael Needham uh, from the Heritage Group there in Washington, D.C. Thank you. We'll Thanks see you for having me, today. Bill.